The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 7th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. And if you'd be kind enough in that subject, can to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, i got a little bit of a mixed bag. That mix really only coming from the Dow Transport's up 101 points. Otherwise, all of the U.S. indices trade to the upside. Dow's up 202, S&P 28, NASDAQ 188, Russell's up 12, semis are up 12, gold is up 11, uh, silver's up 29 cents, slides with crude is back $3.11, trade at 8376, natural gas off 27 cents at 787, 30 year treasury up 19 ticks, she's printed out at 133.19. Lead the charge, dollar wise to the upside, you've got solar edge, SEDG up uh, 19 bucks, nearly 7%, booking holding 17 bucks, 1%. Regenerate pharmaceuticals up two and seven tenths or 15 bucks, end phase energy, a big move here, 4% to the upside, up nearly 12 bucks. O'Reilly Automotive up a buck. Uh, I'm sorry, O'Reilly Automotive is up nearly 11 bucks, 1.5% 1 to the upside. To the downside, it's that shipping company. It's a bunch of shipping companies. SIA, S A I A, down 9 bucks or 4%. Old Dominion up 6 bucks or 2%. FedEx down 6 bucks, 3%. Avis is down five bucks, three percent. Wiley John and Sons is down thirteen percent, six bucks. Corn Ferry is off about five bucks. So we've got some movers, and of course we've got some shakers. So where do we want to begin our day out here? I'll tell you where we're going to begin. We just simply we've got a bit of a rally going on. We'll go take a look at the ES Mini and then the NQ. But first, let's go see what's going on with regard to market breadth out here for the S&P and for the NASDAQ. We'll just take a look at our speed dials out here. We'll see that uh, each of them are set to red. That means that there are more instruments trading below the bottom of the profile for those time frames versus those trading above. As an example, here is a 60-minute time frame. On a 60-minute time frame, we've got a total of 33 instruments trading above profile, 46 trading below. In order for this rally to get any kind of real legs out here, we need to see a bullish crossover on that time frame. If we take a look at the... Um we take a look at the S&P 500. I'm going to guess we're going to see the same thing. Oh, we are not seeing the same thing. Interesting. So now let's open up the 60-minute time frame for the ES Mini for the S&P 500. And as we speak, right, it's right now, right, right this very second, 10 a.m. on the uh, 11 a.m. Of course, it uh, is 11:10. Uh, but right now we have 204 instruments trading above the top of their 60-minute profile, 181 below the bottom. Now. The last time we had a uh, crossover was to the downside. That was at, specifically, it looks like September 2nd, around 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So there is some possibility, as long as this stays in this formation, meaning more instruments above the top of their profile versus below the bottom, there is some uh, potential for a further rally inside the ES Mini. So let's go try to figure out where that will head to. Actually, one other thing out here, just from a shorter-term time frame, I do have my 30-minute TAS market profile to open. 
So let's go take a look at that. Let's pull that over here. The question is, is this still in bullish formation? And here we've got the NDX 100. The answer is yes. Uh, 56 trading above, three below. That's a positive for sure. If we take a look at the S&P 500, the S&P 500 records show, let's take a moment here to update, 296 instruments above and 17 below. So yeah, this is a positive development today at 11, 11 a.m. for the equity future contracts out there, and specifically the ES Mini. So now let's go take a look at the ES Mini out here. We'll switch screens, we'll take a look at our eight panel, one of our eight panel screens out there, and immediately we'll see, take a look, if you take a look on the left-hand side, the daily, you can see the A to B equals CD to the downside. That was completed and confirmed on September 1st. Why was it completed and confirmed? Because that was a bullish reversal candle. That pattern still remains in effect, even though yesterday that low was tested, it was rejected when price closing above that low. What is that low? Excellent question. It is uh, 39, 3903.50 out there. Close below that would negate the pattern altogether. It also has a TD9 count bottom. Its oscillator and change line has also changed colors. What does that tell us? That tells us that price and that oscillator and change line are destined to meet with each other. Right now, that oscillator and change line is printed at the 40, 42 level. I don't expect that's the level where we'll be printing at when price tests that area. If we then go to the right, we take a look at the five hour time frame chart. This has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. This shows us the next key resistance level where the sellers are hiding is at 39.51. If I look at the 240-minute uh, time frame chart, it's got the uh, sellers at 39.47. So we have 47 to 51. If we look at the 120-minute time frame chart, its sellers are sitting at 39.56. 39.56 for the 60-minute time frame chart. We took a look at that uh, market breadth out there. That's where price is likely headed to. Now we can see the A to B pattern that is formed. Let's go ahead and draw that in here, A to B. And we will draw in the C to D momentarily, simply just by copying and pasting uh, that actual line to the SC point. And now what we can see is price is above the one-to-one -one price projection level. This suggests, now if we take a look at price here on the 60-minute time frame chart, what you will see is price on the left-hand side. I've maintained that exact same angle. Price on the left-hand side, that's the strong side of the C to D leg, suggesting that this would do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D. Uh, well, that's what it's doing right now. So where's this next price target? Well, 39.56.50 is where sellers are potentially sitting. So it's very likely that price is going to hit here. Well, if we take a look at the 30-minute chart, you'll see that same A to B equals CD pattern. No topping pattern in place. Of course, you do know that if there was a bearish reversal candle that did form, that would identify the top for that time frame. And then you'd be looking or searching for support to figure out where price might pull back to. The 15-minute time frame says, I don't want to uh, be a uh, to destroy your party and turn it into a pity party. But it does. It is forming bar number nine, which will complete in about uh, 54 seconds out here. Remember, it can be the bar following bar number nine that can make the high of that pattern out there. So this suggests that by 1130, we should see some type of short-term top. Now, we, there's really two options here. One would be we get a short-term top. If we get that, the price should pull back to support. The first support level that is open out here is the 39.30 level, or 39.46. That'd be a good move to the downside. Um, is that likely to happen? Well, we got that nice positive market breadth out there, but that is still the that's still the the game plan. However, if at 11.45 price is trading above the high of this pattern, that pattern will get negated. Tells we're headed higher. That higher, I would say it's likely that 39.56.50 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Mr. Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational, as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we've got uh, Dow up 251, S&P 34, NASDAQ 109. Uh, just a little housekeeping here. I am off tomorrow and Friday. We'll be back with you on Monday and then off on the following uh, Thursday and uh, Friday as uh, well. So let's get to some of the questions that have come in. We've got one inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, this is from um, Jimmy, I believe. Uh, wants to take a look at DocuSign. I believe Jimmy is looking to take a long position here in DocuSign. Well, Jimmy, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, we do not have such a signal. Doesn't mean it won't bounce or anything, but if you're asking do we have a bottom pattern inside of DocuSign on a daily time frame, the answer would be emphatically we do not. Why do I say that? Well, there was a TD9 count bottom that formed out here on the trading day of August 29th. That led to basically a one-day rally out there. That was it. And that pattern was taken out last Friday, September the 1st out there. Uh, so, And there's no other bottoming pattern in the daily time frame that is present at the moment. Not even an A to B equals CD that I could put in here. The uh, weekly shows that price is trading below pretty much everything. Certainly its profiles, its prior lows out there. So this is looking like it wants to head lower. If you were to ask me head lower to where, well, the monthly chart is potentially going to take out its TD9 count bottom as well. That suggests 49.52, but if 49.52 doesn't hold, this thing maybe get, gets all the way back to its November 2018 low and perhaps below that as well. So the only way to take some kind of trade here, at least based upon the daily, weekly, and monthly signals, I know you want to go long, is to do some very short intraday trading out here. And even in that case, on the 30-minute time frame chart, I don't necessarily show that. I see a little consolidation with 54.89 being the uh, level to um, where resistance is at on the 30-minute time frame. So do I see the patterns necessary, required for you to take a, a long position out here? I don't see it, Jimmy, but that, that doesn't mean that I can't do that. It's just the patterns that I use don't support that uh, thought processes out there. So I do hope that helps you out with regard to DocuSign. Thanks much for the request for the question. Um, Raul writes, what's levels on ES Mini? I'm glad I covered yesterday. So we really kind of covered that. 
uh, Rahul. Uh, we were taking a look at the ES Mini in that opening segment. So I don't want to repeat myself. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions out here. So we'll go through that. And if we have time, I'm happy to come back and uh, take a look at uh, that as well for you. Uh, so let's go on to our next question out here. Next question coming from David H. And David wants to take a look at Enphase. That had a nice, it has a nice rally going on. It's up uh, nine dollars and sixty cents. E N P H is the ticker symbol. This will take a moment or two to uh, populate. Let's read David's question. It says, uh, "Hey Steve, yesterday you looked at Enphase for me. Yeah, with today's price action going beyond three hundred eight eighty eight to three eleven, is there a fib level I could use for a possible high tomorrow on Friday? You've got the two eighty five calls. So the first thing is that uh, you've hit resistance." So right now you've got this, uh, well, you've got a couple of different uh, resistance areas. But right now you've got just using the, tra the, the trading day of August 8th, which was that nice bearish engulfing candle out there. Not that it necessarily confirmed a pattern. Maybe there was an A to B equal C to the upside. I'm, I would say there likely was. And that's your real resistance area. Now that resistance level is up at the 308.88. So yeah, you've spiked above it. You've gotten back all the way back. That was probably your, your opportunity to sell into that position out there. Um, we'll take a look at volume. I'll do that off the uh, screen out here. It'll be a little bit easier for me to do that. ENPH, I believe yesterday when we looked at it, price was pushing into a swing point with lighter volume. Yesterday was volume of uh, 4 million shares pushing into that swing that had 4.2. Today you're at 3 million shares. So you are pushing that swing point with some volume. So it does suggest that price should at least go tag that 308.88 area. You specifically were asking for... And you can see you've got the resistance on the weekly time frame as well. But you were asking, I want to answer your question. So we're going to switch panels here. We're going to go to my black background screens because you were asking for a Fibonacci expansion uh, price target. So let me give you uh, that. Give me a moment here. We'll go to the daily time frame. I'll just expand out the daily time frame. And the way that I'll do that out here is just simply take an expansion of its last set of swing points out here. If you give me a moment, we will uh, change so that I've got that tool coming up on my screen. There we go, Fibonacci expansion. So that's going to be from that high, that trading day of August the 8th, all the way down to the low that was formed out here on September the 1st. So the 1 to 1.272 expansion area is up at the 319 level. Above that is 332.66 out here. Um, your calls expire on Friday. Man, you uh, let me look at the let me look at the 30 minute chart, see what kind of signals were out there. Um, I know you'd like to squeeze every dollar that you can out of this uh, trade, <clears throat> you're, you're up at resistance. You tested resistance, you rejected resistance, even with volume, right? Hasn't pushed it over. So on a 30 minute time frame chart, I don't really have much to suggest that you, you sell here. You had that nice big wide ranging bar, but it does look like price is going to pull back to the 297 to the 299 area out there. So I hope that that does help you out, uh, David. Um, and uh, best of luck to you whatever decision it is you decide to uh, go with out there. Let's go to the next question. This one coming in from Hector and Patty. And Hector wants to take a look at, I believe, Exxon Mobil. Let's, uh, well, let me get it going on my white background charts, XOM. It takes just a moment to populate these black background charts out here. And let's read the question. Uh, happy Weird Wally Wacky Wednesday. Back at you, my friend. Exxon Mobil, September 1st, had a low of 92.29. So let me uh, first, let's, uh, as we're reading the question, let me get rid of this. Let me just clear the screen out here. So Hector is talking about September 1. Let's get to September 1. Okay, right here. So he's taking a look at that 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 swing point. It goes like this. Actually, I'm, <clears throat> so I'm September 1st had a low of 92.28. Today's low stop and bounced at 92.30. Um, yes, okay. Is this a red flag for positive clue for a bounce out of here well price is still trading with inside that swing point so that is a swing point out here uh, from september 1st and that runs anywhere from the 92.29 to 95.06 level so as long as price is inside there you know it's possible yeah you know you get down by one tick yeah it is but we'd, we'd really like to see what other whatever other patterns might be in there to take a look at because you see that is also what happens uh hector if today price closes below 92.29 so if price closed below 92.29 that has volume of 16.4 million we've been trading for two hours we're already at 5.6 million six million times three we get us to 18 so we're at similar type volume maybe even more 
out here. So your price is still trading inside that swing point. I don't believe it's given us a definitive answer because if price closes below 92.29, then all of a sudden you have an A to B equals CD to the downside out there to uh, take a look at. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, let's go switch over to the white background screens out here. But I think we answered the question um, as to, or if, uh, yeah, I hope we answered that question, but let's go like at the white background screen, see what else we can find out here. So what we know about Exxon Mobil is that it is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. It's trading below its oscillator and change line. Um, those are not bullish conditions as we speak. Uh, they could be neutral conditions, but they're not bullish conditions. If we look at a weekly time frame chart out here, price is back inside its weekly profile. The week is not over, and price may close back above 95.06. But if it closed below a 95.06, Hector and Patty, it suggests a pull back to about the 89.80 level. And again, the monthly time frame still has that TD9 count top, uh, but price above profiles and a screen oscillator and change line. So it's not the clearest of signals, but on the daily time frame, I don't believe we have the uh, signal that says, yeah, price is going to take off from here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Still a little bit of a mixed bag out there. The trannies being the only one trading to the downside. They're now off 46 points. That was up 236. S&P up 34 points out there. Uh, let's go to our next question. Next question coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. And uh, Brent wants to take a look at the uh, seasonal patterns out here, the seasonal chart. So if you give me a moment, we'll change screens out here. Go to the black background screen. And we'll pull over... Our uh, charts from the folks over at Seasonix. If you like seasonal charts, folks, I'm telling you, these things are great the way they have this laid out. But let me show you. Let me actually just go right back from the uh, beginning out here uh, for you. I'll just stick, uh, 
DAX that will change things up. Now, we'll just simply go take a look at the patterns here for the uh, Dow. So we'll start with the Dow. And, uh, oh, I guess I didn't uh, really change it the way I wanted to. Let me see. Does that change it? There we go. Okay, so we've, we've got the Dow. That's what we're looking at here. And it gives you a number of different selections with regard to time frames, maximum being 125 years. Now, we can put in a customized time frame if we want, or we can select the years that we want to take a look at out there. So it gives you a, a nice thing. So if we take a look at the 125-year program, uh, here's what the seasonal pattern looks like. In fact, uh, we'll put where today's date is at. So from a typical seasonal structure, we typically see over the last 125 years, a top come in right around now. Let's call it Friday out here, September 8th, September 9th. So that's what the normal seasonal pattern. But we're also in the midterm election seasonal cycle. So let's go ahead and just simply click on our midterm elections. It takes, uh, gives us all, you can see all the years that it's using for those midterms. And here in a midterm election cycle, this too suggests that the Dow will top tomorrow or Friday and then move lower into the end of September, September 30th, to be specific out here. So that's what the patterns for the Dow look like. Let's go to the patterns are different for each of the indices out here. If we take a look, for example, the S&P 500, we can do that same thing. Now, you've got today's date. Uh, let's clear this thing out. Here's the 72-year uh, normal seasonal cycle, which in the S&P 500 kind of says we, we sort of had sideways until about the uh, middle of September, and then it moved lower move higher and we don't get to that real bottom until the end of October out there. So that's what that says. However, if we take a look at this midterm cycles, now in this case here, you know, we're using the, the, the total amount of data that we have that gives us fewer midterm cycles than obviously the Dow did out there. But here you can see this too shows some kind of short term top. Uh, then a move down into uh, maybe the following week in September, uh, and then you move higher and then lower again into the early part of October out there. If we take a look at the NDX 100, just to give us kind of a, if we round it out here as a NASDAQ 100, let's do the same thing. Let's put in the maximum number of years. Let's go ahead and put in its mid. So here you can see on a traditional basis, we just typically don't move a lot to the upside or to the downside out there inside the NDX 100. But let's put that midterm election seasonal cycle in. And that says when the NDX 100 should really take a move to the downside doesn't occur until about the end of September out there. And then you've got that final push from a seasonal standpoint into uh, the lows. The question that Brent also had was, you know, how are these things lining up? with regard to perhaps patterns inside the market, or at least that's the way that I, I took it. And to a certain extent, they, they really aren't necessarily. Uh, what I mean by that is, what do I mean by that? Let's go take a look at the actual cash indices out here. I think I've got those. Yeah, I do. We're gonna change screens here. So we'll go from the black screens to the white background charts. Those are from Ninja Trader out here. Those are the two applications I use, our eSignal Ninja Trader, and here, in the case of the Dow, just an example, the Dow chart suggests that we should start heading lower, you know, tomorrow, yesterday, the day before, uh, Friday out there. And if you take a look at the Dow chart, upper left-hand corner, it negated its, uh, by the, it negated its TD9 count pattern. And it did that by closing below the low of that pattern, which was 30, 31,219.75, and it did that yesterday. Okay. However... If you get a bullish reversal candle, right now you've got a bull sash candle today, Brent, then all of a sudden the buy the D point pattern comes into play out there. And that would suggest to move up to its oscillator and change line, 32.135. That really seems like that's what this market wants to do. Regardless of what we just took a look at on the seasonal side, the S&P 500 still retains its TD9 count and buy the D point pattern. Oscillator and change line, changing colors in the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ out there. All those suggest when you have valid bottoming patterns, that price will go target those levels. So if you get a bullish reversal candle today, Brent, uh, for the Dow, it'll have a valid bottom out there. and Price should make its move towards that 32,133 level. The S&P, it's 4040 or so. The NASDAQ 100, it still has its, uh, no, I take it back. It does not, it, it needs today, the NDX 100, we need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. So Friday, um, it negated its TD9 count bottom. There was no buy the D point bottom out there because we did not get a bullish reversal candle. If we do get that today, and currently it's a bull sash as well, then that would suggest a target of 12,552. The Russell 2000 
yesterday negated us by the D-point pattern. But remember, we had a conversation. It was Hector and I, I believe, that had a conversation. He wanted to load up on the IWM. I said, don't do that so fast. Because why? Because even though there was a nice bullish hammer candle last Thursday, there was also a gap to the downside. And so we didn't really know. Was it the bulls that were telling us a story or the bears that were telling us a story? And when we colored in that distance, uh, the gap distance out there, that hammer candle no longer retained hammer status. Price closed below it yesterday. Today is going to become, is it? Let me see here. That low, 1786. Today's low, no. So, in order, uh, so if you get a bullish reversal candle today, you got a piercing candle, that would confirm a buy the D point pattern. If you don't get that today, Tomorrow or Friday could form a TD9 count bottom. Today's going to be bar number eight, but it has not taken out the low. So far, the low of the pattern is uh, yesterday. However, that's not the case inside the NQ. The NQ did take out its lows from yesterday, and therefore it has triggered bar number eight. The semis out there, Brent, they still have a uh, buy the D point pattern. Their hammer candle that formed four trading sessions ago is still intact out there. Today, I know the transports are a weak indice out here. They're down by 53 points right now. They are going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. They could also form a bullish hammer candle today. That would confirm a buy the D point pattern. Right now, it's a hammer candle, but I don't know what it is going to be at four o'clock. It could be much different than it is at 11:36. But nonetheless, you could get bar number eight of a TD9 count. That could be generated a Bob signal. The Nasdaq Composite uh, needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. And uh, the New York Stock Exchange still retains its buy the D point pattern and suggests that price should move up to 15031. So, Brent, I hope that that helped uh, uh, answer your questions out there with regard to seasonal charts and how the uh, current market fits that uh, model. And again, I don't believe that it does um, out here because of all the bottoming signals. And it looks like price really should get up to the oscillator and change line. So that's one reason. We've got that uh, nice uh, bullish crossover that we saw in the 60-minute time frame charts for the NQ and the ES Mini. If those could hold throughout the day, that's a uh, positive out here. If we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator reading, this is for Peter in Park City. I don't know that Peter's on the uh, is on the side of the den with us, but Peter loves to take a look at uh, this chart here. And as we take a look at it, you can see that it's trying to work off an extreme. And I do mean extreme oversold condition. It was down below minus 250 out there. And so this needs to work that condition off by getting up towards that zero level out there. So you've got an oversold condition um, that's in place and uh, just going to be dependent upon the day's close out there. Will this rally that's in effect right now, will it hold and will it generate some additional bottoming uh, patterns out here like by the D point? for some of the indices that do not have bottoming signals out there. So we'll get back to our questions here as soon as we get back from this break. Looks like we have one here from, uh, ooh, Stevie's gonna have to get a move on it. Cause has a question. Wanda has a question. Oh, we just have two. Oh no, Muck has a question. He wants to take a look at uh, Apple. Rossi wants to take a look at Nvidia. We'll take a look at all four of those instruments as soon as we get back from this break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So MUK inside the Tigers Den wants to take a look at Apple out here. So what Apple did yesterday, Muck, is it uh, closed below its TD9 count bottom pattern. The low of that pattern, the bar following bar number nine, was at 154.67. Yesterday's close was at 154.53. So it's negated that bottoming signal. If a bullish reversal candle forms, you'd have a buy the D point pattern. Short of that, Apple wants to go target its breakout level of 152.16. The close is below that. Then we're likely headed uh, lower and lower to where? Well, the next level of support would be at about 149.91. Um, and that's really coming from the center of its uh, monthly profile out there. So the target for Apple is about 152.16. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, um, just looking for any kind of bottom signal or any message out here, just don't have anything. So Apple doesn't appear to be the stock that's going to be the one that's going to save the day, although I do believe they have a... Uh, an event going on today, so that's that could certainly change things. What you'd be looking for on the daily time frame uh, for Apple is a bullish reversal candle at day's end to confirm a buy the D point pattern. Otherwise, 152.16 is absolutely game out there. So I hope that helps you out, Muck, with regard to our analysis for Apple. Rossi wants to take a look at NVIDIA. NVDA is a ticker symbol. So let's get that populated on our screen out here. And, um, and I apologize, I just wrote down the symbols. Uh, hopefully just a review is going to provide you with the information that you're looking for out here. And so as we take a look at NVIDIA, trading out at 135.56 right now, as we get this populated, what do we have? Do we have any kind of a bottom? We do not. Uh, so the daily time frame is still suggesting lower price. The question is lower price to where? Well, it's really not the daily that's giving us the lower price target. we got to move all the way over to the monthly. And where NVIDIA broke out was at 134.59. We're trading at 135.40. So that level has been tested. This is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Bar number nine still has to complete. And in order for bar number nine to complete, this is a monthly chart, we're talking about the month of October, would need to close below the close of bar number five, that close of 151.59. So even if we were hanging our hat on a TD9 count bottom to form out here, you're not gonna get much movement on a monthly basis if that's the pattern that's going to complete. On a weekly basis, what do we have out here for signals? Well, I do see a wave number seven pattern that took place last week. If we have a higher load this week, that is a bottoming signal. Otherwise, if we get a lower low, the pattern continues for one more week out here. So this suggests that price could move up to 157.39. I don't think there'd be a concerted effort until we see some type of bottom signal on the daily time frame. Now back to the daily. The daily is gonna has a TD9 count bottom, but the low so far is on bar number five. Doesn't qualify 
uh, for our uh, potential bottom signal. You've got to get a spike below that level. What is that level, Steve-O? That level is 132.70. It doesn't have to close below it. It has to spike below it. If it does that today, tomorrow, or Friday, then NVIDIA would generate a TD nine count bottom signal and suggest to move up to its oscillator change line in the 151 area. So again, NVIDIA, no bottom signal today. We could get one by Friday out there. And uh, price is holding the support level of 134.59. Hope that helps you out, Rossi. Thanks so much for the request. The next question, Kevin from Cause, wants to take a look at Occidental Petroleum. As we pull up the uh, charts for Oxy, he also wanted to take a look at UNG. So for UNG, what we'll actually do is go take a look at the uh, natural gas contract out there. And I will get that set up in advance. Uh, there we go. So now we take a look at Occidental Petroleum. What's Occidental Petroleum doing? Well, it looks like it's uh, forming an A to B equal C D to the downside today. So what I need to do is actually go back and take a look at the uh, volume out there. That's three time frames, O, X, Y. So you can see it's taken out that swing point from a couple of trading sessions ago. And that swing point, oh, hold on, hold, hold, hold your horse. It was taken out yesterday. So that swing point at 20... 21 million shares. Yesterday was 21 million shares to the downside. Today you're already at 10. So yeah, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside inside of Occidental Petroleum as we speak. Here's the A to B point out there. I'll just simply uh, copy that. Well, actually, I won't even copy it. I'm just going to move that over. There's your B to C, your C to D leg. That gives a price projection to 6154 level out there. The weekly time frame shows a price within inside its daily profile below its oscillator and change line. 62.79 is a target. 53.78 is another one. On the monthly time frame, TD9 count top. Uh, price within inside the profile could be suggested to pull back to about the 54.84 level. So with regard to Occidental Petroleum, it's got an A, a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. And I don't have anything that shows me that that's not going to come to fruition at this moment in time. So I hope that helps you out. Oh, you also want to take a look at UNG. So let's go switch uh, screens out here. Let's go to our black panel screen where we can take a look. Well, momentarily we'll be able to take a look at it. I still have Occidental Petroleum up here. Let's go take a look at natural gas. So when we take a look at natural gas, take a look at the uh, current contract out here, which is October. So here in October, what you'll see is there is a uh, so this formed a TD nine count top, I believe, uh, natural gas or TD yeah TD nine count top out there as a bar falling bar number nine August twenty third, and yesterday price closed with a wide wide range of bar below the bottom of its profile, but there is a new weekly profile that's attempting to form, and that support level seven eighty seven. If a price closed below 787, this is going to continue to head lower, head lower to where? That's a great question out there. So let's pull up uh, this chart. Let's also do um, natural gas 1022 on a set of white background charts out here. So here, the head and lower to where? Okay. So this is not using my advanced Doppler tool that showed that new profile level. So, you know, ordinarily I'd say 745. And, and 745 is still a target. I don't know if that profile is going to confirm until Sunday evening. Uh, but what I was looking for here is actually, and this I've got it now on the white background charts, the next level of support for natural gas for the October contract. Now, with regard to the UNG, I don't know which contracts are inside there. Odds favor, but you've just got their, their October and November. Um, is, is, is likely, but you've got to go take a look at that. But if we take a look at the October contract here for natural gas, it is going to go target $7.70. That's its TD9 count breakout level for its daily time frame. Now, today is going to be bar number six. Maybe by the end of the week, you've got a TD9 count pattern that would be confirmed on Monday out there. But right now, it looks like uh, natural gas wants to head lower. Uh, around seven seventy would be the price target to the uh, downside. Um, Peter, I'll show that to you in a, in a moment if we can. Uh, so that takes care of Oxy and UNG. Let's uh, do the uh, last one out here, last request so far, is to take a look at Goldilocks. So let me get those charts here fired up. If you give me a second, uh, gold, there we go. And this is for Wanda. Wanda inside the, uh, was that the tiger? No, that was by email, a request out there. It was just simply if we could take a look at uh, gold. So I believe gold confirmed a road momentum indicator bottom a couple of days ago. 
for its daily time frame. Let's get that chart. Yeah, you can clearly see that. Had that nice bullish piercing candle. So, Wanda, the real key level of resistance for gold, while well, these charts are populate, but you can see it on the daily time frame, and that is its oscillator and change line, that little red line. We're going to expand out the daily time frame chart for you so you'll be able to see this. Let's actually clean up the chart just a tad. So you got a nice Rosemontum indicator bottom. You've got that nice piercing candle. But you just have price just consolidating with inside that new daily profile there between 1707 and 1762. But what gold really needs to do, one is close above 731. If it can close above 1731, then gold will go ahead to 1762 out there. You see if there's anything else out here for Wanda, Goldilocks. Not much that I see. You can take a look at that five hour time frame, TD9 count top. The price will close above that high. 1737 is off to the races. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back now, folks. Let's go back out to that ES mini chart out there. We were taking a look at it earlier. We can see that the rally is extended. We did get that TD9 count top uh, right on schedule at 11.15. That has just simply led to a very small retracement. Price is above the top of a new profile that formed out here. That formed at exactly 11.45, and that profile is below price. That is a bullish message. So I would expect that this TD9 count top to fail on the 15-minute time frame chart. A close above uh, 39.47.75 will confirm that message. You can see we're still along the strong side of the A to B equals CD on the 60-minute, the 30-minute chart. That tells us about doing more than a one-to-one. -one. We know at 39.56.50 is where we've got uh, resistance, both on the 60-minute,
60 minute, the 120 minute chart out there. The uh, new profile level on the uh, five hour time frame is up at the 39.52 ish level out there. So the real battle is going to be at 39.56. If price can close above that white shark, then what we should see out there is a further rally. And that rally, again, should target at a minimum should target its red oscillator and change line on the daily time frame that's currently printed at 40.43. So that's what's going on there. Let's take a quick peek at my one of my black background charts out here. This one is always fun because we can start with a blank chart and then decorate it. When I say decorated, what I mean is uh, levels of support and resistance, whether they are diagonal or horizontal. So let's first take a look at the... Uh, Come on, Stevie, work here. Let's first take a look at the uh, first, the smaller rising price channel. And we can see here inside the dollar, just simply pull this back a uh, tad out there, how price uh, this uh, week is uh, testing this weekly chart that we're taking a look at. So price has held that level of support. Well, in addition to that rising price channel, we have a descending channel with inside that rising price channel. So this is held. If we're going to bounce, where are we going to bounce into? Well, I would say we would bounce into that. Try to pull this back just a tad. We would bounce into that descending trend line up there, you know, in around the 32,000 area. And then we don't just stop there because what we have is we've got our larger rising price channel out there. And just to finish it off, we've got our horizontal trading range boundary lines out there. Folks, stay tuned for a great program. And again, I am off tomorrow and Friday. So I will see you on Marvelous Monday. Have a great couple of days, a great weekend, and we'll see you again soon. Take care now.